Hey, it's Jim here from Janku, and today I want to take a look at the Plentico project. Now, Plenty is a static site generator that's built on Svelte, so it makes building websites really easy and designing things really flexible. I just want to hop in and show a quick example of building out a slideshow in Plenty. So I'm actually going to come over here to my terminal, and let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And then I'm just going to go to my desktop, and I'll create a new project. So I'll do a plenty new site and I'll call it AAA. So they created a new folder here on my desktop called AAA and I can just open this up in Codium, which is my text editor. And then now that that's open, I can actually come here and close out this terminal. We don't need that anymore because we actually have an integrated terminal over here in our editor, just like this. So from here, I can actually just run a plenty serve command and that will start up my web server. And it brings up this local host here. So I could actually copy this URL and I could come over here to my browser and I could paste that in here and we could see our local website. So this is plenty out of the box. It has some blog posts, it has some paginated output, it has some internal pages. So that's pretty cool, but we want to add some slides to this and have some dynamic transitions between those. So let's take a look at doing that real quick. Go back over here to my text editor. And you'll notice here that we have a couple different folders. So we have content and we have layouts. And then we have some other helper folders here, but we're really worried about these two right now. So we want to add a new content type to our project. So let's come over here, add a new terminal window. And if I'm in here, I can run a command that says plenty new type and I'll name it slide. So I'm making a new content type called slides. And you can see here that it created a new source in our content folder and it created a new layout. So if you came over here and you looked in your folders, we now have a slides folder within our content folder. And this has a blueprint.json file. Don't worry about that right now. And then we also, in our layouts, we have a content and a slides.spelt file that's empty currently. So let's do a couple things here. Let's come here and for now, let's just grab our pages.svelte content here. And let's copy that whole thing. And then let's just go to our slides folder. And let's paste that in that file there. So this is our template for the slides content type. And then in our slides content folder, let's actually come over here to the desktop. And let's grab, I have this content slides here already ready. So it has a bunch of JSON files. And let's just grab these JSON files and let's put them in that folder. So I'm just going to copy all of these and drag them over to slides and drop them in. So now we have slide one, two, three, four, and five. So if we come back over here, we can actually look at what the slide content looks like. So each one of these files looks pretty similar. So there's a title, a description, and then there's the order that it wants to appear in. So let's come back over here and let's go to our website and let's reload this. Now, We want a link here that goes to our slide content, right? So let's go back over here and let's take a look in our global nav.spelt file. Now in here, we have some nav links. We have our about and our contact link that corresponds to our about and our contact link here. We can grab this about link here and let's just copy that and paste it. And let's just say that we want our slide and maybe we want our first slide and we'll just call this slides and we can just save that and if we look over here in our output here you can see that that rebuilds automatically come over here reload this so now we have slides here now if i click on this link you notice that it says oops page not found so four four handling is out of the box with plenty which is pretty cool but if we want to understand what's happening with our route we have to understand how routes are set up by default so if i came over here to my slide content you notice here that we're in a content folder then we're in a folder called slides and then we have file names like slide1.json, slide2.json. So by default, Plenty is going to try to slugify the path of this folder. So the first folder is going to be slides, and then the first file is going to be slide1. So if we look over here, we tried to actually navigate to slide forward slash this, just the number of the slide. So if we want that valid URL pattern, we can just go to slides, and then if we type in slide1 and reload, we can see, okay, now we're getting some slides. That's pretty cool. So it's pulling in some information. It's actually pulling in the default page information. It's treating this just like a page. And because we have similar structures 
in our content source to page content, it actually works. We pull in our title here and we pull in some information here. And then we also have some information about what templates being used and the content that's being used. So that's pretty cool, but we wanna change some of this up. First of all, we want it so this link actually works. Let's just say we, that we want this to be the URL pattern that works. So if we come back over here, we can override the URL pattern for this content source here by coming up to our plenty.json file. Now this is our site-wide configuration file. And just like we're overriding the pages in the index path, we can come in here and we can copy this. And instead we're going to target the slides content type. And we're going to say that we want this to be forward slash slide, and then the number of the slide. Now, if we look back over here at our JSON data, you can see that we can pull out the number just from this ordered field right here, right? So each one of these slides has an order. So why don't we just pull that out right there from that directly? So I'm going to say, give me a field value and give me the order. And now that will overwrite that path by default. Now, a couple of things to note here. This is Plenty version three that we're on. So this is going to be changing in the future. This will be called routes in the future. And then this actually will probably be pluralized to match the other uh, templates. So this will pre be fields in the future. So just if you're having any trouble with this, make sure you double check that to make sure that stuff is all right if you're on version 0.4. So I'm going to save that. Let's come back here. Let's go to our homepage. Let's reload this. Now let's click into our slides. Okay, so now we have slide one. That's great. So that's working pretty nicely. Now, we might wanna have some transitions between some slides. That may be kinda of cool. We also need some way to navigate between slides. So let's come and let's do a couple things here. First of all, maybe we wanna hide the, the nav up here and the footer. Let's hide those just so this looks like a, like a more like a slideshow and less like a web page. And so I'm gonna come back over here to my main html.svelte file. I'm going to check before I add things like this nav in this footer that we are not on a slide page. So I can do that pretty easily. I can do an if statement and say, if the content type that we're getting for this current page is not slide, then go ahead and display the nav. And then we can end that if statement right here. Okay, we can do the same thing down here for this footer. So let's come up here and we can actually copy this. It's gonna be the same exact thing. So if we're not on a slide content type, then sure, add the footer, that's great. And then let's save that. And let's come back over here and let's reload this page here. And let's just make sure that... Oh, so we actually made a mistake here. So our content type is called slides, not slide, so that would not match. So make sure that we have this say slides and let's save it and let's reload this page here okay so you can see here that we have this kind of looking more like a slideshow now let's do a couple other things let's come back to our template and our slides template let's get rid of this uses so we're not going to get any information over here about the templates that's really cool that's handy but we don't need that you can see right here that it actually does update so it tells us that we're on slide two here uh, that's pretty nice but let's just go back for now and let's get rid of this uses section here and let's come up here and let's actually wrap this whole block in a transition so we're going to make this a div we'll say that the id equals slide and we'll bring this like this so it wraps this whole section and we'll add some transitions. So we'll add an in, let me just check my notes real quick. So we want to use a scale transition, okay. So we're going to in scale and we're going to set a delay of 300 milliseconds. And then on the way out, we're also going to use scale without a delay. And now we have to actually pull the scale transition in from our package. So we have to do something like this. Make sure we import it, I believe. Oh, 
what are we doing? We have, looks like I didn't put that in my notes, but we do have to import that. So let's do import scale. Let's format this from spelt transitions and let's save that see if we get any errors there make sure I didn't mess this up it looks like I do have an error here so okay spelt is it might be spelt transition is that any better Okay, that one looked like it completed. So I guess the package is called Svelte Transition. And let's come back here and let's reload this page. And okay, so let's go back home. So you saw that that about page did fly away there, right? So if we go back to our slide, it flies in. And if we go here, then it flies back out like that. So that's cool. So we're getting that slide transition there. That's pretty nice. It's actually going between our routes. Okay, so that's great. Now, we might want to think about moving this so we can get to other slides as well. So we want to add some controls here. We'll do something like this. We'll say a href equals. So this is a link. And we'll say call this one previous. And in here, we want to do something like this. We want to say, OK, we want a slide page. But then the page that we're going to, if we're going to the previous one, we want the order from this page here. So we want order, make sure we're getting that in. We have to pull that field in here. Pull in our order. And we'll say order. And that will be order minus one to go to the previous page. And then we'll do order plus one to go to the next page. Now, order is a string right now. So if you try to concatenate strings, with numbers, sometimes you get weird behavior like 1 plus 1 would be 11 instead of 2. So you actually want to make sure that you're getting this as a number. So just wrap your order field in a number so you can actually do the math on that. And let's just grab that. And I'm going to add another one down here. We're going to call this plus 1. And we'll say next. So we can get to the next slide. And then here we'll just call this get rid of the paragraph tag for now, and we'll say exit slides. Okay, so save that, come back here, reload this. Okay, so now we have previous and next, so that's pretty cool. So we can come here and we have an exit, so we can go to the next slide. So you can see that there's a second slide here, and let's just show what slide we're on here. Let's add to our title that we want the order variable so we know if we're on the first second third fourth whatever slide come back over here let's reload this okay so we're on the second slide so now we can go previous we can go next but you're noticing here that it's actually not doing any transitions right so it's not actually animating between these slides so i can exit this slide and you see the transition and i can enter the slides you can see the transition but once i'm in here it's not doing any transitions that's because this is the way that Svelte's actually hand, handling dynamic component loading. So we actually use dynamic components to load each one of these pages. And since we're getting the same route uh, component, so basically the same, L, the same HTML is actually constructing this, it doesn't think to rebuild this component. So we can actually force it to do something like this by using a key block. So we'll just do something like this. We'll say key and make the key on content. So basically the content's gonna change every time, right? So we're getting the first slide, second slide, et cetera. And so as long as we key block on content, we can get those updates. So I'm going to just close the key block and let's also make sure we have this in the right place. We want our controls outside of the key block and let's save that. Let's come back here, let's reload this. Okay, so now we have some kind of transition. So we can go forward and back and transitions every time. Now let's just style this real quick to make this all fit. So let's come in here and let's just do something like this. I'll add style tags. So in Svelte, style tags are going to be scoped to your components automatically and any styles you're not using are actually going to be shaken out of the tree automatically. So you have really lightweight styles. Let's just come here and I'm going to target the slide. 
And let's make that display flex flex direction column and height 100% and we'll say justify items center let's try that give it a second okay so now we're getting some really weird long stuff that's okay now let's just see what we're doing here make sure that our styles are right should this be justify content okay justify content center would do better for us okay so justify content center that's looking better and then we can do some things with some of these other things so let's just change this Okay, and then let's make sure that these are appearing on the outside. So let's just do a quick, uh, on these, um, we'll call these controls. Let's add some classes to them. Class equals control. And we'll do the same here. Class equals control. And in our control class, We'll target that here and we'll just say for the control classes, make sure that your position absolute and your top down 50%. And then if you are a control first of type, so the left control, we're going to say left is zero. And if you're a control last of type, so that's the right one, we'll say you're going to be right, zero. And let's also just make sure that there's some padding here. Padding, 20 fits, okay. So I'm gonna save that and okay. So that's getting better. Maybe we want our padding to be 0, 020. So we don't want to stretch out the top and the bottom there. Okay, actually, do you want, we want that to be margin? Let's do margin 20. Okay, that should be better. Okay, so now we have next and previous, that looks good. We want to make sure that uh, some of our style here is coming through co correctly. So we have our div, but we probably want this to appear outside of that. Let's see, we have justify content, okay. So we probably want this exit here. So we'll just make this a class or an ID. We'll call this exit. And let's just target exit down here and let's just do something like this. Exit and we'll say display in line block and margin will be zero auto to center that. Okay. So now we're in pretty good shape. So we have some slides here, right? So we can exit out of the slides, we can go back to our slides, and we've gone through some key topics, like we did content types, we did some routes, and we learned how to model our content. So we're in pretty good shape for doing some cool stuff in plenty. Let's go to our next slide. Okay, so pagination is really important if you have long lists of things. So for instance, if you wanna make a blog page that has lots of blog posts, like maybe hundreds or thousands of those, you don't wanna display all the blog posts at one time on the page because that'll make the page load really slow and it's kind of overwhelming for users. So one thing you can do is you can actually paginate them. So you can say maybe display 10 or 50 blog posts and then have many different pages for the rest of those. Now we actually have an example over here on the homepage. So you can see here that we have these blog posts. So we have more than three, although we're displaying three here, we actually have four. Our fourth blog post is over here. And we have these little 
uh, helper directionals at the bottom so you can navigate between these. If there's more pages, you could just go to the last page or the first page. You could actually just add some blog posts to this and it would automatically increase this pagination. So if you went to seven blog posts, so if we went beyond this page here, you get a third little number down here and it would increase automatically. Now, the way pagination works in Plenty is pretty cool. If you come to your site-wide configuration file, you notice here that we use this paginate key. So what this does is it actually goes into your content source and it tries to figure out based on how you're building your front end display, how many total pages you have. So this variable is anything that you define. We actually don't use, make you use any sort of specific pagination scheme. You can use anything that you want. So if we came over here and we looked at our index file where our pagination is, you see that we're pulling this information here. So we're we're getting some, we're setting how many posts we want on every page. We're getting all our posts from our content object and we're just filtering it by the blog post content type. And then we're getting how many there are by getting the length of how many posts there are. And then we basically round up to the nearest number because even if you only have one post on a page, you still need a full page for that. And then we determine the high and the, range, the low range. So this shows which posts should be appearing on which specific pages. And now because we call the variable that gets us the number of uh, pages, total pages, so that's the variable right here. This is the name of the variable that we want to use over here in our replacement pattern for our route. This can be any variable. You can set this up in any way you want as long as you get that plenty smart enough when you're doing your actual build to actually go and figure out how many pages there are and paginate it accordingly. It also gives you a little pagination information on each content page that you have so you can then pull that back in. So for instance, the content for the current page will have a pager item and that'll let you know what page you're on for the current page and it lets you set up some really dynamic things like this pagination on the front end. And you'll notice if I were to reload this, so if I do a control R to reload this page, it still is aware of which URL I'm at. So I can come over here and it knows I'm on this page. So if you want to send a link to somebody like copying the link and send them a specific page to uh, some items that you want them to see, you'd be able to do that because this is all server rendered as well. So that's pagination. Let's go back to our slides. Okay, so we're on the first slide again. Let's go second, third. Okay, so this is interesting. So you notice here that when we went back to our slideshow, we had to go back to the first and kind of segue through it. It'd be nice if we could actually come back to a place where we left off in our slideshow. So we can use stores for that. Now, Svelte has writable stores built into it. So if you're used to something like React, you might be um, used to have to pulling third party libraries in order to use that. But Svelte is cool because you can just use it out of the box. Now we actually have a stores example. If you look over here, we have Svelte writable stores. And we have this little widget here that lets us increase account and decrease account. So we can hook into this store that we already created here and just use it in our slideshow and hook it into these little widgets so we can keep track of that. So let's take a look at doing something like that. Come over here and you notice in our scripts, we have this stores example. So we have this writable store here. And then if you were look at our blog page, you can see where we're actually pulling in the store. So we actually have this idea of pulling in the count from that script there. So that's pulling in the count from this stores example. So that's cool. Uh, and we can copy that basically. So let's come here and I'm going to grab the count and I'm going to come back over to our slides example and I'll call it back up to our script at the top here. I'm going to pull in that count here. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a function here. So I'm going to say it, um, let's look at my notes, the set count. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make a function. We'll call this set count and set count will take one argument and we'll use the argument to basically return that value. Let's see. So we'll take the count variable and then we'll run the set method on it and we'll set it to the variable that's passed in there and that will update that store. And basically what we want is every time you click on one of these links, it will set this here. So we're going to add an on click handler to this. And in our on click handler, what we'll do is we'll run. Oh boy. Yeah. So on click would equal set count. So that's how you would call a function 
in, uh, in a click handler. Now, if you actually want to pass a value to that function, what you actually have to do is you have to do a, a arrow syntax here like this, and then you can pass a variable in here. You can't just pass this directly. It seems tempting to just to just want to do this and just pass some kind of argument in there, but that's not going to work. So make sure that you just set up a quick arrow function here, and then you can pass something. So we're going to actually pass our order minus one again. And again, remember we have to wrap this in a number so we can actually do the math on that. So we'll wrap this in a number like this. And then let's just copy this and we can paste this down to get our other one as well. So let's paste this. I messed up the spacing, but that's okay. So this is going to be plus one. And okay. So now if we come back over here, let's just reload this page. So let's let's go previous. And so now we're on page two, right? So this should have got updated to page two. Let's let's exit out of here and let's look at our writable stores example. Okay, you can see that it's set at page two. So come back to our slide. You see we're still on page one. And if we go to here and go to page three and exit, you notice over here, if we go back to our storage example, we're on three now. Okay, so it's keeping track of the stores, but we're still going to page one every time. So we actually have to update our nav link. Let's come back here. Let's go to our nav.svelte. And basically we need to pull in this value instead of just hard coding this one in here. So let me come up here and make a script. And let me just look at my notes here, make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, okay, so. So again, we need to import count from our script file. So we're in the global folder. So come out of the global folder, go into the scripts folder and grab the stores.svelte. Svelte file. And then what we can do is we can do, we can set a variable. So we'll say let slide. And we'll say that we're going to count, subscribe. And I believe we're going to do something like this. Let me double check that. Oh yeah, then set your local slide variable equal to the number that we defined there. So, okay. So, okay. So basically what happens is uh, we're getting that value and we're assigning it to this local variable, which we can then use in our URL pattern here, just like this. So I'm going to add the slide variable. And now if I save that, and again, I'm going to have to refresh. So we're going to lose all our progress. Let me refresh, come back to our slides. So slide zero is not found. Okay, that's right, because our stores example is being initialized to zero. Let's initialize this to one right off the bat so we can get to a valid page. And then let's come back here and reload. And let's go to our slides. So we're getting the first slide. Now if we go and we go to the third page and we exit our slides, maybe we do some different things. We look at some examples and we go back to our slides. Now we're on the third page. So that's pretty cool. We can go away and we can resume whenever we want back to our original place. And that's how stores are working. Okay, let's take a look at our next, next example here. So this is dynamic components. Now, plenty is cool because you can do everything in a content driven architecture. And basically what we mean there is you define your content structure first, and then you can basically key your layouts off of that. It makes it really flexible because we don't define any keys that you need to have in your content source. You can design your JSON in any order or any way you want. And as long as you account for that in your templates, you can use those dynamically. Now, it's pretty cool because the relationship between your content and your templates are pretty clear. You basically define a key in your content and then you can use that key as a field in your template. And I think that makes this kind of uh, workflow really dynamic. So there's an example here that shows how this works. So we come here to the dynamic components example. You see that? So we're pulling in these two components here, this blue bouncing ball and this yellow spinning square. We're pulling those in dynamically. Now, the thing that makes them dynamic is not the fact that they're moving. That's just a CSS animation. Don't worry about that too much. 
thing that makes them dynamic is if you look over here on the blog post page, so the blog.svelte, we don't actually import those components at all. So those components are up in our component folder. So it is the ball and the block component but you notice here that the blog page doesn't actually pull in the ball or the block explicitly anywhere here. What we're doing is at the bottom of the page, we're saying loop through components and then basically give me a dynamic component based on that component name. Now we have our content here. So if we look at our blog post and we look at stores or rather dynamic components, you see here that we have this components array that we define. We can define this anywhere we want. And then we just name which components we want to pull in dynamically. Now, this may seem like it's pretty standard. It's like a component-based architecture. So you can pull different component HTML and order things differently on the page just based on what your content source is without having to change any markup or HTML. But it's kind of interesting because the way that Svelte works and everything's a, a single page app on the front end, you actually can't fetch components in a dynamic way synchronously. So if you know dynamic imports, they have an asynchronously. So if you want to resolve this information, so if I do hard refreshes here, you can see that those the, that information is all there on the HTML fallbacks that you're seeing, which is pretty cool. So we're actually resolving those things synchronously, even though that's a really difficult thing to do on the back end. So basically, all you have to worry about is writing your components in any way you want, and we'll take care of making sure that the HTML fallbacks are there for SEO and fast page loads, and then you can use them dynamically on your front end. So it's kind of a nice thing. Keep in mind that this all components uh, construct, construct might change. So this is all components right now. This is probably going to be called all layouts in the 0.4 release. So just keep that in mind for coming here a little bit later. This might change. But the idea is the same. Basically, we wrap all these components, every layout on your site into something called a component signature. And then we pull in that component signature on the back end on your builds. So you can get that both in your HTML and your front end app, which is pretty nice. All right, let's go back to our slides. Well, because I did a hard refresh, we lost our, our place here. Uh, that's okay. And let's come back to dynamic components. And basically, I want to leave some time for questions here. We have a really cool theming layer in Plenty. So if you go to our website and you go to themes, you see that it says coming soon. This is just because I haven't had a lot of time to actually build out themes. There is a video series where I did build out one theme. So if you're interested, go to our YouTube channel on Janku. And actually, if you scroll down on the bottom of the page, you should be able to see that YouTube channel. So this is the Janku YouTube channel. And if you were to go to the Plenty playlist, You might have seen videos like this before, but here's the... Uh, you can come down here and you see there's this big spring, well, there's a lot of pop-ups. Uh, there's this big spring playlist here. So it goes through making the big spring theme and it tells you all the different aspects there. So if you're interested in how to make a theme, you can take a look at that and that should help you out. But basically the theming system in Plenty is pretty cool. It allows you to pull things down without worrying about Git submodules, but it also tracks your, your Git history. So if you want to pull upstream changes, you can do that. Definitely take a look at themes. I don't have time to cover it in detail today on this video, but uh, if you have any questions about this, of course, reach out and I'd be happy to discuss themes with you. And that's basically it. So thanks for watching and listening to the presentation. If you like what you see on Plenty and you want to get involved, and you want to help out the project, definitely reach out. We're on Twitter at, at Plentico. You can check out our GitHub page directly or just go to the website. Uh, if you really want to help out the project and have a low hanging fruit way to do it, just go to our GitHub and make sure you just give that bad boy a star. It just helps us out to uh, show that the project's getting some attention, getting some steam, because basically this project's getting aggregated in a bunch of aggregates, aggregator sites. And in order to appear at the top of those lists, you have to have a lot of stars. And it'd be really nice if we could keep that momentum going, and get more people on board. So that really helps out a lot if you ever want to do that. Okay, thanks for listening, and we'll be in touch soon with more content like this in the future. All right, take care.